So, hi and welcome back to another session. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do a budget actually, but not only um, the normal basic budgeting, but we'll have a look at the budget planning because I actually need to do it for a customer and I uh, it was <laughs> quite hard actually to understand it. Yeah, um, you know it, I guess. So you see quite nice looking, um, quite nice looking YouTube videos about budget planning. So for example, like this one here where Microsoft is showing you the things, how it works and it looks very nice and you don't know how to set it up. By the way, this video is really extremely great. So have a look at it. Just take the one which is one hour and 20 minutes. But yeah, as always, <laughs> it takes a quite um, a long time to set it up because there are quite a lot of rockets just in the way. Good. Um, I'm just quickly going to show you what I'm going to do in the next hour or hours. And yeah, as you can see here, my totally ugly looking uh, yeah, PowerPoint presentation. Let's make it even uglier. Let's put a yellow background. But anyhow, good. So what I'm going to show you is in the, in the end, um, well, the finance department wants to create um, an initial budget in the end. So over the budget planning, of course, um, he wants to show actually the actuals from last year and also the last year's budget. So just in comparison that the that the uh, departments actually can do their budget based on those figures. Um, automatically, it should be distributed. So basically there is one general budget plan actually when they create it and it should be then distributed to um, different kind of um, departments. So respectively, in my case, I'm going to do it based on cost center because it's yeah, it's quite normal in Switzerland to do it based on cost center and not on departments. And it makes it also easier for the organization hierarchy that you don't need to make too many, um, too many settings there, actually. Good. So um, all the three departments just um, request the budget or uh, just confirms the budget. And in the end, it will be aggregated back to finance and finance is going to approve the aggregated budget and generates the budget entries. It looks actually quite simple. Believe me, it is not. <laughs> but anyhow, so um, we are going to start as always. I'm going to use a totally blank mandate so that we really start totally from scratch. You can even see here there is not even a posting in it. So uh, yeah, good. So I just quickly create a new main account. Um, yeah, so ch so Swiss main account. Don't worry, I'm not going to create too many main accounts. I'm actually just going to create here a cash account, which is of course a balance sheet account. I'm going to create, let's say, yeah, one revenue account, revenue account, and this one of type revenue, and then let's say six five. Mm, 66 travel costs and not profit and loss but expense. I'm go just going to show you right afterwards what it is and 05 um, eating costs doesn't matter. Eating costs or lunch costs, lunch costs and as well main account type expense. Good. Uh, as you already saw, I've added here the main account type expense. Uh, and so I distinguish between revenue and expense. If you want to do a budget, which is just a cost budget, then you should do it actually, because later on in the budget, you can uh, filter for the main account type. So if you would not, if you would put everywhere, just profit on loss on those three accounts, you would end up having all the postings as, as well, the revenue postings, and maybe you don't want to make um, a budget based on the revenue. So in this case, yeah, just split here between or distinguish between expense and revenue. Great. So I'm just quickly going to add here the Swiss main account and I'm going to save it. Perfect. Good. So as I said, I want to do the whole thing based on cost centers. So this means you cannot just use a normal uh, financial dimension. So it's not possible to go in here and to say, well, I want to create here a new one. And I say here, cost and dimension CC for cost center and add here financial dimension values. It don't work. So don't do it this way. Um, yeah, 
you always have to go over the organization and also over the organization hierarchy because otherwise it won't work with the whole distribution because the whole distribution is done over the organization hierarchy. Therefore, what you need to have is you need to have one department at least. Um, I actually didn't figure it out if it would be possible without any departments because I actually would not need to have one because I just want to do the budget on cost centers. But uh, yeah, there is the need for one department just to have basically the person who is responsible for it. So therefore, that it makes sense. I'm just quickly going to create one. It is a shared table, therefore there are already some things in it. Uh, yeah, but in this mandate, of course, nothing. Good. So I'm going to create one, let's say um, finance. What mandate is it, by the way? GLSI, GLSI, consult. Uh, okay, finance, um, GLSI, for example. So finance department, GLSI. Good. Okay, um, that's fine. I just quickly save it. So I've created my uh, department and I'm going then to create the cost centers, also a shared table. So therefore, I'm just going to create here. I said um, perch, purchase for GLSI because it's shared GLSI. Purchase, purchase department, GLS, uh, purchase department. Good. Okay. Now you need to have, of course, then manager. So um, those will be the responsibles later on as soon as the budget plan or the, the child budget plan is distributed. So for example, you would have here person A from purchase department, person B from IT department and person D from admin department. I'm going to show it, but I'm going to show it later on how to edit and how, what the setting needs to be there. So I just say GLSI, not purchase this time, uh, admin. So admin, GLSI, and I'm going to GLSI. And what was the last one? Last, of course, IT. So ITGLSI. Good. So now you need to have actually also a hierarchy for budgeting, then in the end. So this means nothing else than you have to go here to organization administration, to organization and to organization hierarchies and create a new one. So I click on new and I say, well, uh, GLSI budget, budget, high budget. Good. Okay. You also need to have assigned purpose. There is, from my point of view, I think there are two purposes needed. So one is um, budget planning, of course. I'm just going to add here my GLSI budget. I click on OK and I put it as default. And as far as I saw, also security needs to be added. So, oops. So therefore, I click here as well on add on GLSI budget and I set it as a default as well and I close it. F5 and perfect. Good. Next is that I need to create the hierarchy in the end. So it means nothing else than I just need to click here on view. And now I can actually start editing by click on the edit button. I can say, well, I'm going to insert my department. So the responsible department, which will be the finance department, of course, on the first hierarchy level. And now I'm going to add the different cost centers. So GLSI admin. Um, another one, cost center, GLSI purchase, another one, insert, cost center, GLSI IT, and OK. If you would have, for example, the case that um, the IT department would have sub cost centers, this would be possible as well. So in such a case, you can just add here and say, well, OK, the call center, it doesn't make sense, but it doesn't matter. But for example, the cost center, call center and mall would be sub cost centers of the cost centers IT. Since this doesn't make sense, I'm going to remove them again. And okay, good. Uh, you can say now publish. I'm just going to publish it on the 1st of May and I'm going to publish and okay, perfect. So 
we've created actually already um, the hierarchy. I'm actually not sure if this would be already sufficient because I think there also needs to be kind of rules um, behind it, but we are going to see it right later on. Good. So um, we've created the cost centers and of course those cost centers need to be in the account structure as, as well. So this means in the end, nothing else, nothing else than uh, it is a shared one, of course. So this means I need to go and create um, an account structure. So this means just quickly go in here. I create a new one, GLSI, let's say um, balance sheet. So balance sheet and OK. Balance sheet, at least from a Swiss perspective, we have all the accounts which are between 1000 and 2999. OK, activate and OK. This is just the normal things. I'm going to add one GLSI for, um, let's say, contribution margin or whatever. So revenue and Cox accounts, for example, and OK. Since we don't have any kind of purpose, so I'm not going to add any financial dimension. So I just say here, from 3,24999, I'm going to activate it as well. And I'm going to add the interesting one, so the GLSI CC. So costs and cost centers. Good. So yeah, let's make it simple. It is between 5,000 and 9,999 and I'm going to add a segment and it needs to be the cost center and yeah, all values are allowed just to keep it simple. Good. Um, I think it's there were for, I put four digits, so I close it. I just quickly check if it is four digits. It is perfect. Great. Uh, I need to add, of course, this in here. So the balance sheet, yes. So that's, yeah, I'm just going over these things quite quickly because, yeah, um, it's, yeah, I start with a, with a totally blank system. So, of course, I hope that you normally have those things already available. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, in this way, you directly see everything what I'm doing. And, yeah, you can reproduce the whole thing then, of course, as well, at least, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah. The thing is basically, um, if you really have different kind of mandates, as I already as I already said, the cost centers in here they are shared, and you're going to see right now, and I'm going to create a general journal what this means in the end. Oh, okay, I need to create quickly a journal. So um, GJ oh, general journal elimination. Oh, okay, is it? I don't, I hope it is not, um, I hope it is not, a, well, I'm going to create a voucher, create new, GJ, general, journal, scope parameters, company, GLSI, and I'm going to add, I'm going to remove this one, and GJ, and six digits, and on the general, one, two, three, one, two, three, I put it to continuous, and GJ, save, good. Uh, it looks at it is kind of consolidation mandate, so I think I just quickly need to check it in here to take it out. No, not here, of course not here. It is under organization. Oh, sorry for that, but anyhow, GLSI, GLSI, use for, um, it's not. Good. Otherwise, I would not be able to post anything, but now I am. So I say GJ and I go to lines and I just make um, some postings because I need to have actuals from last year, of course. So I just say um, fifth, fifth, 15. I'm choosing the lecture account. So I say the travel costs. And now, whoops. And now, as you can see, there are actually all cost centers are available in here. 
uh, which is maybe not that nice because you just want to see those which are for your company. And as I said, um, from my point of view, at least what I tried, it is not possible to generate just um, a normal a normal financial dimension um, as as you know, as normal or as I do it normally. Yeah, therefore, yeah, we need to do it differently. Um, so let's say not admin. So this one IT. 1,000, one, yeah, 1,000, good. So if you want to get rid of um, the, the other ones, so if you don't want to see the other ones which are actually um, not within your company, you can actually do the following. So you can go to the financial dimensions, to the cost center financial dimension, and then to the financial dimension values. And for each of those financial dimension, you can say companies, you can then say GLSI, GLSI, and then suspended. And yeah, it is actually now just suspended for the company GLSI, not for the other company. So if I would go take this one, this one is not suspended, GLSI is suspended. So I just quickly do it for all of those. I just quickly make a pause on the video, then I just put on all the other ones, the suspended ones. Good. Great. So I just actually put everywhere. Yep. I put everywhere here just the suspended ones, just those three. Not, of course, because those three are not suspended. So let's see what happens now. So now if I go here to the lines and I'm just going to add um, another line, let's say... Um, 8, 8, and I say here the launch costs, mm. and now I just have those three which are not suspended available, so that's actually great, I'm going to add here just some postings, um, this, uh, so let's say, And everything, yeah, this won't work, of course. <laughs> this doesn't work. Okay, and um, as the offset account, I'm going to add here the cash account. And great. So fifth, fifth, I'm going just to quickly to save it in a journal. Mm. I don't have. Uh, periodic journal, I don't have one. Uh, PER, uh, not daily, periodic, sorry for that, but yeah, anyhow, I'm going to use the same voucher number and my one, good, and okay, and I'm going to post it on the 5th, 5th of 15, then And I'm going to post it, and I'm going to post it. Perfect. Um, just quickly going to create another one, just that we really have some postings in it that we see what's going to happen. So I'm going to retrieve the journal, which I've created right before, on the 8th, 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 8th periodic journal, a copy. And of course, uh, normally you need just need to delete the date and then it's going to take the empty date on the periodic journals but I'm quite sure that you know that and not 16 15 so okay now we have some postings in the last year available great so okay so this means this means nothing else than we do that we have postings which we can use then for the budgeting also just to take the actuals good so i talked about the um responsible so the the budget the budget manager on the cost center in the end so in the end nothing else than this guy in here so um yeah, I'm really going to show everything. Therefore, I'm also just going to show you um, the whole thing, how to connect the worker. So, of course, you need to have um, a person. So, hopefully an employee. So, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to create my one. It needs to be um, an employee of 
this legal entity, of course, makes also makes also sense. I'm honestly not sure if the position makes sense, but I, I think it needs to have a position, but we are going to see it right afterwards. Um, so, yep, this doesn't matter. And I save it. Great. And of course, the system user. So my system user, for example, is admin. It needs to be connected to the worker in the end. So I just need to have here the admin user and I need to put the relation to my created worker. And OK. And then it should have such a sign here on the left side. Perfect. Great. Means now nothing else, then I can now let's add another a second worker, GLSI, does he already have? No, it doesn't. Now I, yeah, I just quickly go to, going to create a second worker, just that we really see what this means. I'm going to create uh Ah, no. Let's say Gisbert. Müller. Good. He's an employee. And Bamina Chakobutsi or something like this is also a worker of GLSI. Good. So means now nothing else then let's go back to the general ledger and to our cost centers and now i should be able to add here to those three departments the responsible person so um for example it let's say this one is gisbert and purchase is famina chakobuzzi and i'm the the one, the guy from admin. Great. And of course, you also need to put it on the created department as well, the manager, which is, of course, me. Who else? Great. Okay. So um, that's fine for the moment, I hope, at least. So means in the end, nothing else. Then now we can finally start to set up um, the budget system. Good. Great. So um, now we can go to the budgeting module. So perfect. Um, yeah, we need to do some settings. Well, in the parameters actually not. You just need to ensure that there are some uh, number sequences in it. In here, um, it doesn't that matter for us actually. Um, but we need to make some basic budgeting things. So dimension for budgeting, of course, main account and cost center. I'm going to do the budget on both. If you would have other budget dimensions, for example, projects or whatever, you just need to add it in here as well. We'll see right later on how you can do different kind of budgets. So of course you can do one for projects and a separate one for cost centers. Um, this is actually not a problem at all. Great. So, um, yeah, <laughs> now you will see, uh, well, okay, just one second. I'm also need to have a budget model. I just create here a standard one, standard budget model, but it's actually just for later on. I'm going to create here original budget, original budget and the type original budget. Um, so things aren't that important actually because we're going over the budget planning, but it is needed later on. Good. So let's go to the budget planning configuration. Uh, you will see it is unbelievable big, uh, the whole thing, or uh, quite complex. And um, uh, as I see, there are things in it already uh, because it is also a shared table over all mandates. I just quickly try to delete all these things I think I can't do do it but I'm just quickly yeah no of course I can't delete it uh, yeah uh, because the budget can be done of course um, over several mandates and everything it needs to be a shared table as well but anyhow I'm really just going to create everything uh, from scratch so 
as I said, so we have here at first an initial budget in the end. So a budget which is just uh, created based on the actuals and on the uh, budgets from last year. So you just need to think that all you need to think that all these kind of budget plan scenarios are is actually each step. So for example, initial budget approved budget from finance, requested budget from blah, 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 and then um, then to approve from finance and uh, approved budget. So just the different stages in the end, um, so different steps which um, the things can go through. So this means nothing else than in our case, let's just click, click create here, let's say um, yeah, 0, 0, 0, 0, 001, let's just add something that it is in the beginning zero zero um initial so initial budget sorry uh yep yeah. sorry i made a never um I was thinking error it is of course the initial it is actually all these kind of things so it's actually the initial budget or let's rest the different kind of scenarios within one budget plan so this means nothing else then for example here last year's actual so last year actual so last year's actual so just a different kind of things that can um, appear so that you want to see and compare monetary of course so monetary then zero zero last year budget so last year budget last year's budget monetary as well then we have of course the one which is created so basically the one for this year so let's call it um this year this year to approve this year to approve so what I'm actually doing is nothing else than I have here the comparison between last year's actual, last year's budget, which is everything a scenario. Out of that, so those two are actually just to have a look at. This one is the one where the finance guy can say, well, okay, no, this year I want to give him 5% more or whatever. Good. So after that, the different departments are generating as well a new scenario where they say, well, okay, he said he wants to give me that, but I want to have more on um, on travel costs, for example. So we need to have here this year, um, this year requested, requested from CC. So this, oh damn, this, this naming is quite stupid, but anyhow, this year, this year um, requested from uh, cost centers as well, monetary. And after that, we have here one to approve in the end. So... So the finance guy needs to approve it. He maybe changes something back and yeah. So this means this year to approve CC. So <laughs> this year, yeah, please take another naming. This is totally stupid. This year to approve, to approve from cost center or um, yeah, this year's amount <laughs> to approve which the cost center requested which the cost center requested okay as you see i didn't make any kind of thoughts about the namings yet but okay and then the final so zero zero this year final um this year's final good so uh, monetary monetary good so we start in the end here let's take that we have at least have the different kind of step zero zero one zero zero two zero zero three just that i don't forget about which one is the which one is the steps good so we have 
this budget is based, so the first one here is based on three kind of scenarios. So um, we have the last year's actuals, we have the last year's budget, so this and this. Out of those two figures, the finance guy or whoever um, creates the budget is creating um, a new budget, maybe plus 5% out of the last year's budget or whatever. Um, which needs to be approved and will be distributed to those three cost centers. So the three cost centers get this figure and they can then make new adjustments on it and say, for example, uh, he gave me 4,000, but I want to have 6,000 and sends it back and they, and they X will aggregate it then automatically and gives the finance guy an aggregated form in here, uh, in this scenario, where he can do um, adjustments again. And then after he um, approved it, it will be uh, the, this year's final budget in the end. <clears throat> Good. So those are just the different scenarios. So you just then have the possibilities in a budget plan to compare what happened actually between each of these steps. Next will be the stages. So uh, the stages in the end is nothing is nothing else than, well, you say kind of things, what stage is it? So for example, uh, in here you say, well, initially created, then next will be submitted, for example, um, then aggregated and things like that. So just at which stage each of the scenario is. It is quite complex kind of, uh, of, of view, but as I said, uh, maybe this video helps. He is going to show it quite clear. So the whole process in the end uh, is actually um, shown quite nicely in here, especially the the OPEX one. So the, yeah, somewhere, start somewhere here after 40 minutes and um, is around 30 minutes long. So it is actually quite a good video. Good. So, okay, about the stages. So just let's just quickly think about the stages. So um, means nothing else. So we have here um, the finance guy who is creating. So we have, we have actually two kind of different workflows which are going through. So two different kind of things which are, yeah, make which are uh, beside each other. So we have the total budget in the end. So just the one on top. So he's going to create it, he distributes it, and he's going to aggregate it back. So it is this one and this one owns actually together because it is one budget. So this means nothing else. Then we have also sub budgets. So it means nothing else than we have in here beside the total budget, we have also the department budgets or the cost center. Yeah, I'm working with cost. So the cost center budgets. This means nothing else than we have in the end from process kind of view it is just uh, split it out into partially kind of uh, partially kind of things and put it back together. So therefore regarding the stages we just need to think well in the beginning we have here an initial budget. So so let's say stages. This doesn't make sense, but okay, a stage. So it's, those are just the different kind of stages. So this means we have in the beginning here an initial budget. This one is distributed. So this means this means nothing. This means nothing else. Then we have here. Then on this side a status or a stage, which is, for example, um, so we also really need to do all the kind of different things. So for example, here distributed. So the stage where we distributed the different kind of budgets. We have then the stage where the department needs to um, review the whole thing. So for example, depart department review stage. And we have then the stage, so you need to think step by step so uh, he, they get it they review it and they submit it when they are finished and say it's fine so let's say here submitted after they submitted it it is going to be aggregated back to the total budget so you need to think total budget total budget department budgets so this means we are 
back here in the total budget. So this means we have here then a new state, which is aggregated, for example. So really each step. So it is distributed, it is in review, it is submitted, and it is then aggregated. And then next um, in, let's say, um, fin finance review. So the thing where the finance guy is going to review it. And the last stage would be then, well, finance approved. Good. So submit that could also be, for example, department approved. Good. So those are actually the stages within the two different kind of workflows in the end. So this means nothing else than we need to create those stages. So let's say here stage zero one initial so initial budget zero two distributed so distributed to um, cost centers and I've had here there as well whoa back to stages um, then then next zero three um, department department review um, in review at department we have zero four zero four which is department approved department approved and then we have zero five aggregated so aggregate aggregated budget we have zero six finance review review in review at finance and we have zero seven finance approved so finance approved good so those those are the different stages now we are going to the next one so to the workflows um yeah so yeah as you can see here we need to add here a workflow id therefore we need to create at first a workflow before we can start with this register here and therefore we are going back to the main screen of AX and then you have here on the setup the budgeting workflows. Great. So in the workflows we also need to have um, for each of those um, different workflows. So because in here uh, in, the to in the total workflow, you have actually the, the kind of things like, well, you need to distribute them, uh, you need to aggregate them back together, and then it needs to be approved and so on. And in here, you just have, well, you receive it, one needs to say, yeah, it's fine, and so on. So for each of those things, so for example, if you would have sub sub things, so for example, sub sub things where you have, as I said, um, sub cost centers, then um, you maybe need to create a new, a third one in here. If the process is different, if it would be the same as here, then two would be sufficient as well. But anyhow, so we go in here and click on new, and then we need to add here the budget plan workflows. Um, the budget plan workflows. That's the only one which makes sense. Yeah, budget plan review. Yeah. I click on create workflow and wait till AX is reacting. And I quickly click on pause until AX is reacting. <laughs> and it reacted. <laughs> Great. Okay. So, um, yeah, if you are familiar with workflows, uh, yeah, then you're maybe not familiar with the workflow of the budget uh, things because you really need to have here the automated tasks, which are quite important. So, 
let's let's give him uh, yeah let's give him a name so we just click here on properties and I say um, work zero one workflow total budget um, no I am the owner of this and that's fine and I close it good so now as I said you have in here different automated tasks so um yeah depending on where you are you need to use them so for example you just need to think well we are here on the total budget so after it is created and sent so at the initial state what should happen so as soon as the finance guy created created it before nothing happens it actually just starts in here with this distribution so after he said well this and this amount the this and this uh, cost center gets and as soon as he clicks on the submit button then this workflow is going to start so first of all what needs to be done well we need to have the distribution so that um, ax is going to create those three sub plans so it means nothing else. The first step is activate associated budget plan. So it makes totally sense. So I just connect it. And since it is an automated thing, you actually don't need to um, do there any kind of settings. Good. So then the next is, well, okay, we've created different kind of stages. So we've activated those kind of those kind of budget plans now you can say well okay as soon as those budget plans are created um, someone is going there and is going to uh, manually add here the stage the stage um, distributed yeah for example uh, but of course no one wants to do that do that manually so the workflow should do it on your own so uh, on, on its own so therefore if I add here the budget planning uh, budget planning stage allocation means nothing else than the workflow is doing the step from initial to distributed fully automated good so means this one is the second step the third step is then actually the stage the stage transition budget plan um, so this means nothing else Then in the new one, he's going to add this one, maybe. Okay, as you see, I'm also not that that sure. But of course, but in the end, you just need to have all those three things in it. Uh, stage transition, budget pl uh, budget planning, stage allocation makes sense. Stage transition, budget plan. So within the new budget plan, he is going to add the new the new one. Okay, yeah, this makes makes sense. Okay. Good. So we are still on top level. So this means nothing else than he, it is now distributed. He has the state distributed then in the end and the workflow needs to wait then. So it just needs to wait until those sub, so the child um, plans are actually filled out. So therefore uh, you just need to, um, you just need to add there as well um, a new one. So, so a new, um, a new kind a new kind of uh, task actually which is then of course review associated budget plans that are completed so you just need to put it in here so in the end AX is then just going to make this kind of step good so I connect it as well so after this is done so we are just going to create this column here not this column so in the end so as soon as all those things are back uh, AX needs to do then again of course um, a budget planning stage allocation because so I just quickly connect it because the stage changed as well so from initial in the end to aggregated good so um, after that as well the stage transition which also needs to be added good 
So this means nothing else than we are now in the next stage and it starts to do the things based on the workflow that needs to be done. So what needs to be done then? So we have then basically um, finance which needs to approve it. So it just needs to be put from this one to this one. In the end, um, nothing else than um, an approve of the budget plan which needs to be done. Therefore, I'm going to add in here the approve of the budget plan. Good. And in the end, in the end, then as the last as the last step, we need to have another stage transition of the budget plan. Good. So this would be the workflow for the top thing. Um, yeah, you don't need to totally understand what is going to happen, but it is working this way. Not even I am understanding all these kind of things because I also just tried it uh, today how to set up this uh, <laughs> budget padding and I actually also never did it at the customer side so it will be also my first time where I'm going to do it great so um, first of all in here what we need to what do we need to add well we just need to say well basic settings we need to say um, yeah review of the uh, budget plans of the associated plans. Yeah, that's fine. I put it in here and it needs to have in here as well. Hmm. Review of the budget is totally blah, blah, doesn't, doesn't matter at all. Assignment. Good. So uh, in the assignment, you can actually say, well, who needs to do it? Um, so we can say well based on the based on a participant so role based budget organization participant so in the end he is just going to take the guy who is the one which is responsible for the budget so just a responsible person in the end the, resp yeah, the responsible person that we've added on the cost center good no escalation so everything in here is fine of course, you would be able to add here a user, directly a user. Maybe it makes sense then in here. Good. So this means nothing else. Then we also need to have here um, the approval. So who is going to approve it? So you need to double click on it. Then you end up on the next step. And in here on step one, again, basic settings. And then I'm saying in here, um, finance to approve finance to approve finance to approve and maybe in here in the assignment in here it maybe makes sense to add directly a user because um, in the end yeah you have the guy the CFO maybe who needs to who needs to do it in the end so uh, as you can see it is the system users not the worker so you need to add here the system users so in my case i am the cfo who is always going to approve the budget so i'm just say well it's always me great so i close it i go back and this workflow should be fine so therefore i click save and close and i click on blah 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 and on ok and i want to activate it Believe me, we are, we are still not at the end. There are quite a lot of other steps that we need to do. So, <laughs> yeah, good. So we've created the first workflow. So just the one, the one for the total budget. Now we also need to have one actually, which is just for the second part here. So where the cost center um, are getting the whole things. So and needs to um, approve it. So. Yeah, in the end, it is a little bit a simpler one. So, but we need to create, of course, here then a new one and again a budget plan workflow. And I create the workflow now. Oh, this one was faster. And I'm going to say, no, not basic set. Uh, yes, basic settings. Um, zero two. Um, department workflow. Also, I am the owner. So this means I can close this. Good. Now you can think about, well, what should go and happen in here? Well, first of all, 
he needs to change again the stages. So, um, well, it seems it's not um, this one here, but it's the stage transition. So he's just going to say, well, okay, I need to put it from distributed to department review. So the old one, so the other one before, when we send it out, puts it to distributed, which is actually in the end one of the, on this side. Uh, and in here, when this workflow starts, so with the distribution, this workflow starts, so this means nothing else, then we need to put here also a stage transition to put um, this one to the department review stage. So therefore, I just say here, start. Good. What happens afterwards? Well, the someone needs to someone needs to um, approve it so therefore we need to add also this one that it needs to be approved respectively it's not approved actually so you maybe you think it is this one but it is not this is really just the end um, this one in here is actually if you want to review a partial or a child or a child budget plan so this means I just say in here well okay those guys need to do it and then after that so they at this stage they are going to review it they are going to say well it's fine they click on the button and it needs to be changed as well so the stage needs to be changed as well from review to approved therefore we need to add another stage transition good so in here, of course, we need to have basic settings. So um, department to review, department to review, and department to review. And in the assignment, especially in here, it is important to take the role-based one. So the budget organization participant, and I'm actually not sure if I did it correct in the total budget one, but we will see. We will maybe end up in errors, but this doesn't matter at all because it should not be um, a workshop that I'm doing to show you how great AX is. It is, should be just um, a trial to figure out how those things that Microsoft programs is are working actually. Good, but we've created those two workflows now and we can go back to the budget planning configurations and we've stuck here in the workflows which we can now add actually after a short break. <laughs> so okay let's move on with the workflow settings. Well um, here as well we are now actually going to create again here the total budget and one for those kind of things and we are also going to add each of these stages to the different kind of workflows so this means nothing else that i first of all i'm going to do it the total budget so i'll just say zero one total budget so total budget and of course we say here it is the workflow for total budgets quite simple um well, it doesn't need to, re it, it's not a requirement for a parent budget plan and those things in here as well, not because I want to be able to delete it. Good. Now I need to add here the different stages which are possible to use. So, um, yeah, as we said here, in the end, nothing else than those things in here. <laughs> and actually, uh, it is... Uh, it, is, it needs to be this way. <laughs> okay, so um, in the end, the total budget, I need to put here, then the initial, then we have aggregated, we have finance review, and we have approved. So those four stages in the total budget. Great. Um, yeah, important, um, don't do it anything like click on add, because somehow there is kind of a bug, because then they are disappear. So click on add go to next one, go back and they, and they are still in. If you don't do it, you will see what happens. And if you would have the case that uh, the, the selected planning stages are uh, blank, then yeah, I didn't figure it out how I can solve this problem then. But anyhow, so we have here then the depart, department, department budget, department budget, and I say department workflow. Uh, here, because 
it always needs to have um, a parent budget plan because the parent budget plan is the total budget. You need to tick it. And of course, we're going to add those three stages. So uh, the distributed, the department review and the approved. Great. So this was it with the workflows at the moment. We are now going to um, add the scenario constraints. The scenario constraints there are oh, unbelievable much in, but I oh, maybe I can delete them. Then. Yeah, perfect. Great. So now it's blank. Great. So in the scenario constraint, you can say, well, what can the people do at which stage? So for example, um, yeah, just quick click on add, then I can show it. So you have just the possibility to say view or edit. So for example, um, yeah, as soon as it is you know, an easy example, as soon as it is finance approved and everything, and it is when it went through the whole workflow, you don't want anyone that it is, is that it is able to uh, change it. Therefore, you would say at this access level stage that it is just view and not edit, of course. So in the end, yeah, quite simple. But we are now going to add also different budget plan scenarios to it. So um, remember, budget plan scenarios are the different kind of like last year's actual, last year's budget and those kind of things. So it means nothing else than I say in the beginning, well, we have here the total budget initial in the beginning. So we start with that. Okay, we have the last year's actual but the last year's actual figures. Do you want to change them or be able to change them? No, you just need to create your budget in the end. So out of those two figures, you will receive the um, proposed budget from finance, for example. So therefore, the last year's actual should be just to view in the end. So next, we say. Again, total budget initial, but the second scenario, last year's budget. Here as well, last year's budget should not be changed, of course. It is also just to view, to create the new one, to create the this year's budget. So therefore, I need to add the third one. So it means nothing else. And I say here, again, total budget, still stage initial. But at stage initial, I have this year to approve. So it is just a proposed budget from finance, the initial proposed budget from finance. And of course, this one you want to be able to edit. Makes absolutely sense. <laughs> at least, I hope. Good. So, um, yeah. After that, we are going to add the next step. So we have here, here, those three and this one will be then or is then going to the to the cost centers in the end so this means nothing else than what do we need to do is we are going to transfer this budget to the new budget so in the end which we are just sending out the um the proposal of finance to the different cost centers and they will have it then as well in their scenario available but they should not be able to edit this one so this means I just say here new and I say in this case it will be the distributed one so 0 to distributed so we have here then as well the budget plan scenario which the finance guy sent them and this means nothing else than the purchasing department receive this proposal from finance and of course he should not be able to edit it uh, he should just be able to view it good we have then as well in the same stage so as well when it is distributed the new budget which the which the um, cost center is going to um to do so in the end nothing else than this one so the cost center person is saying well but i want to have more so this budget so this scenario needs to be editable of course because uh, the guy from purchase department maybe say well okay i want to have more or less good okay so then the next 
the next stage. The next stage would be department review. Um, yeah, in here, I'm actually just going to add exactly the same things uh, in here. So at the department review, it is still the case that the TJAI or whatever just view. And in this stage here, um, again, the TJRCC is editable. So at this stage, at this stage, of course, uh, it still should be able. I'm actually not sure if this is even needed or not, but um, better add it, yeah, because then it is working, hopefully. Good. So after the guys from the department clicked on the submit or OK button, we will have the stage department approved means nothing else than at this stage of course they should not be able anymore to um, edit the budget none of them but of course still want to be able to see it therefore we are going to add here the department approved again the tjti just view and the approved TJRC, TJRCC again just view because it should not be possible to change them. Okay, next stage. We are then at the aggregated stage. Um, here as well, this is a stage which is automated, so it is it's going directly to finance re review. Nevertheless, you still need to add it in there as well. So this means this means nothing else than let's say at the aggregated stage um, it is back at the finance department and the finance department won't actually see all of the different scenarios. So so uh, he wants to see still the last year's actual last year's budget, the the thing that he created, the thing that um, that the department requested in the end. So this means nothing else than that we need to go and say, well, okay, um, let's add a department approved, yes, okay. So this means nothing else than I need to say, well, okay, the next step at the total budget again, when it is aggregated, I want to have the last year's actual, just view, again, total budget, um, aggregated last year's budget, just view, again, when it is aggregated, I, of course, also want to see the thing that I, or that the finance guy sent, but at this stage, of course, I just want to view it and I should not be able to change it because we are now here where we get back the aggregated things. And of course, I don't want to be able to change the things that I've originally proposed. Therefore, it is just view. And then again, aggregated and for the things that the cost center said again just view because um yeah i should not be able to change what he sent to me but the stage uh, aggregate but the thing that it is now here so the amount to approve with the cost center blah 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 this one should be editable good honestly here as well I have no clue if this one is even needed, like here in the distributed ones, but what I know it is needed here in the finance review stage. Therefore, I'm, we just need to add exactly the same things for the next, for the next stage view. So here, uh, finance review, 002, view, next, so blah, 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 blah. so 03, just view, add, um, oh, yeah, not two times the same. And add um, finance review 04. And at the finance review 05 should be editable. Great. Okay, so in the end, so the next step, so the next stage, finance approve. This one is going to happen as soon as the finance guy is saying, well, yes, everything is fine. And I click on the OK button. Then, of course, you want to still see all the different kind of scenarios. So you want to have it, let's say, in Excel, for example, like 
this that you have here, um, purchase department, and then you have last year's actual, last year's budget, um, propo proposed from finance, uh, proposed from CC, then um, approved from finance. So just something like this and then in here maybe the different kind of amounts where you can see well last year's actual was 100 last year's budget was 80. Uh, the finance guy proposed 120. The guy from cost center wanted to have 5000 and uh, in the end uh, the approved one was 150. So yeah you want to see all those kind of things and of course for the IT department the same. Um, but you just want to see it as soon as it is approved without the possibility to change it. Makes, I guess, totally sense. So therefore, what we need to do is finance approved and we need to add all the different kind of scenarios and all the different kind of scenarios just needs to be uh, in a view mode without the possibility to change it. Change it. Da, 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 da. it is quite a lot of work. Whoops, this whole budget module actually or budget planning you can't believe it and you, you can believe that uh, it was quite a lot of work to get into it and to on un to understand the whole to understand the whole the whole thing uh yeah <laughs> but it's in the end if it is working it's actually unbelievable great it's really unbelievable great functionality that i actually totally love great so um we are almost in the middle of the whole thing and yeah um still far away from um, going to be finished. So yeah, um, I would actually say I make here, um, yeah, I make a second part of the video in the end. So I just make a second part of uh, of budgeting. So therefore just have a look at the second part to um, see what you need to do for the last, uh, for the last different registers. Good. So see you in part two of budget planning in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 R3. See you 10, by the way. No, see you nine. But anyhow, <laughs> it's getting quite late. So. <laughs>